Building the next New Jersey, that's the headline from Governor Phil Murphy's 2023 State of the State Address, from property taxes to a boardwalk fund. He covered a lot in his plan for how to get it all done. And joining us now to dig in and debrief is the man himself. Governor Phil Murphy joins us right now. Governor, thanks so much for taking a few moments for us. Uh, first and foremost, how did it feel to be back giving the speech in person for the first time since 2020? Chris, good to be with you. It felt great. I mean, it was uh, electric. The room was packed. The reception I thought was good, including from both sides of the aisle. There's nothing like being in person. I have to say that for sure. <laughs> a little bipartisan support to start things off is definitely a highlight. Let's lead with the good yesterday. New Jersey's unemployment rate is at 3.4%. That's lower than the national rate and the lowest since right before the pandemic. The state minimum wage is up to over $14 an hour. The anchor property tax relief program deadline has been extended. All great news. But for a lot of folks, as you know, it's still it's the grocery bills, gas prices that continue to fluctuate. The everyday things that are still top of mind with Jersey residents. So what do you say to New Jersey residents who are feeling that life in the Garden State is still just too expensive? Listen, uh, we've been focused laser-like on affordability since day one. People forget the train wreck of a state that we inherited, including out-of-control property taxes uh, in particular, but out-of-control cost of living generally. I think we've put through 14 tax cuts for middle-class families, seniors, veterans, in our five years in office, and we're not going to we're not going to give up. We know there's pain at the kitchen table. Inflation is easing a little bit, thank God. Uh, but but it's not we're not in the end zone yet, as they say. Yeah. So this anchor property tax relief program, just to pick one example, is not on the margins. This is historic. This knocks your property taxes back, depending on how much money you make a year, back over a decade. Uh, that's not just a lower increase. That's a dramatic reduction, and, and, and that's, a, that's one example of many, but it's the biggest. And it is tangible money back in people's pocketbooks, and that is good news. And I want to talk about that real quick. Do you think enough was done to promote the anchor property tax relief program? Because we have heard complaints that the system, it's hard to get through, it's hard to navigate yeah. once you get there, and there are still about a million eligible people that have not applied yet. So what would you say to that? Yeah, that, I mean, that number is coming down dramatically. I, I'll, I'll use this opportunity to uh, put forth a shameless commercial. Go to anchor.nj.gov. That's the easiest way to go, and it's become much more streamlined. Listen, we've had huge demand for this. Yeah. We, we, we think this is uh, over half the residents in our entire state will be impacted positively by this. Uh, and, and so when you've got something where people are lining up around the block, uh, it, sometimes early on, it takes a, a bit to get caught up, but we're caught up right now. We're promoting it like heck. As you said, we extended the eligibility a month. Uh, and God willing, we'll get everybody who wants it uh, to, to be able to get it. And excuse me for going rapid fire on these topics. We know we have a limited amount of time with you, and there's a lot of things I'd like to get to. Crime, obviously, is another top concern, especially thefts, car thefts. You mentioned in your address that car theft was down 13 percent at the end of last year compared to 2021, but still thousands of, and I'm sure you would admit, way too many cars are being stolen in all counties in New Jersey. Now, I'm born and raised in New Jersey. I live there now, and I have a hard time just because I know so many policemen in my town. I don't even leave my car to run into the house real quick with the keys left behind. Is the state doing enough to combat this issue? Yeah, I th the short answer is I think we are. By the way, we're not unique. This is America. This is happening all over the country. We've done a lot. You're absolutely right. The curve is going in the right direction, but it's still too high. Uh, I've got proposed legislation that the le legislators are reviewing that will help us give us even more weapons. So God willing, uh, we'll be able to not just get the curve bending in the right direction, but break the back of it. All right. And speaking of cars, because this is a huge, huge concern with so many commuters, we're talking about New Jersey residents and congestion pricing. Now, you didn't mention it in your speech yesterday, but Governor Hochul said in her state of the state that she is all in yesterday. What is your latest position on that? It hasn't changed. Um, it, it's not as though we're opposed to mitigating emissions and climate change. In fact, I think New Jersey's got the number one environmental record of any state in America. That speaks for itself. But I can't allow New Jersey commuters to be double taxed. And secondly, we don't have the alternatives in place because of all the foot dragging that happened before we got here. There aren't the new rail tunnels under the Hudson. The, the Port Authority bus terminal uh, is not uh, been renovated or rebuilt. All of that's finally progressing. 
during our time, but it's not where it needs to be. We need to give commuters real alternatives and right now, they don't have them. Because I think New Jersey commuters, especially when they hear that yesterday, that again, congestion pricing is still on the table. Having just had the tolls, the Port Authority tolls at the bridges and tunnels just go up just last week, I'm sure people, and this speaks to the larger measures we're talking about, everything just costs so much. Wages are not necessarily rising for everybody in every class, but everything is just weighing on people's minds each and every day. Chris, I'd ask a rhetorical question. Why on earth would New York City as it's trying to recover and get back on its feet, charge more money for people to get into Manhattan. I, I literally don't get it. The MTA is broken. I don't know what they've done with their finances. They're not gonna recover on the backs of New Jersey commuters, I can tell you that much. The uh, tone of your address sounded yesterday very different this year. You started off internationally by mentioning Ukraine. You emphasized the importance of cooperation, bipartisanship. If I may, it sounded like you're playing to a bigger national platform. Now, if I asked you to give me two or three potential presidential candidates, would you be on that list? There's one on our list in my party, and I believe it'll stay that way, and that's President Joe Biden. Uh, and, and we are all in. He says he's running. I take him on his word. He's earned it. I think he's had a heck of a run, particularly the past nine to 12 months. We are a thousand percent behind him. But if someone would ever come to your desk and offer you an opportunity, is it something you would think about at least? My, my nose is pressed against the Jersey glass, and I'm all in for Joe Biden. <laughs> you spoke about promoting gun safety on Monday. I know a federal judge blocked part of your newly enacted gun law this past week. Are you concerned about some additional challenges with that? Listen, the good news is most of that law either was not challenged or most of it actually stood. So I'm gratified by that, even though I don't agree with the opinion. We knew this would be litigated. We know this is gonna be a long road and we're committed to overturning that and making sure that that law in, in, in its entirety stands. We believe it is 100% consistent with the Supreme Court ruling. Uh, we, don't, we don't like the US Supreme Court ruling, but we know it's the law of the land and we believe a thousand percent that our law fits within that. And before I let you go, you talked about refortifying the Jersey Shore, boardwalks being offered protection and whatnot. What does that look like for people who not only live, but vacation at the Jersey Shore? I mean, the Jersey Shore is a huge economic driver and it's the source of, of generations of memories. It'll be a boardwalk fund uh, available up and down the, the four shore counties and many communities. More details on that when we unveil our budget, but I'm really excited about it. Okay, and before I do let you go, I've got a quick gotcha question for you. Who do you got this weekend, Giants or the Vikings? Oh, Giants. Without question, Giants. Um, I think the Vikings are vulnerable and the Giants have what it takes. <laughs> good answer. Very good answer there. Uh, Governor Murphy, thank you for taking a few moments for us. We greatly appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Chris. Governor Phil Murphy from the Great Garden State. And if you missed it, you can watch the governor's full State of the State address on our website, cbsnewyork.com.